grip on this operation, Heather. That's more. Green light, yes, sir. Sir, I need more time. We have no time. Are you going to give that order or not? Sir, please. You are too naive to see the truth. There's no bringing in born. He will defend his police officers. Listen to police officers' commands, listen to what we tell you, and just stop. The nation needs to realize that when we tell you to do something, do it. And if you're wrong, you're wrong. If you're right, then the courts will figure it out. We don't get the ticket. We enforce it. But at the end of the day, each and every member should go home safe. Sometimes the use of force is necessary. You need to comply with the police officer the way the system was meant to be. Comply with the orders of police officers. Resisting arrest is a real and dangerous crime. Nonpartisan liberty for all. I'm your host, Dave Bourne, and it is September 28th. 2016 and we are coming to you live from las vegas nevada thank you for tuning in to nonpartisan liberty for all we're on weeknights tuesday through thursday 7 p.m pacific 10 p.m eastern and you can listen live on spreaker.com and nonpartisan liberty for all.com and to the archives immediately following the show on spreaker YouTube, Twitter, Tumblr, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and iTunes. On our partisan liberty for all, we promote the ideas of self-ownership and the ideas of true freedom and liberty, meaning be, being able to do whatever you want as long as you respect the freedom of others and don't directly interfere with their freedom. Exposing government for what it is, a mafia that rules are a mafia that's based on extortion that rules without consent by threat of force and violence. We are happy to hear from you, and you can reach us via phone at 702-470-7664. That's 702-470-7664. You can also reach us via Skype at username nonpartisan liberty for all. Um you can also get all that information and more at nonpartisan liberty for all.com where we have all of the contact information, including original articles, blogs, archives, and other fun things, links to social media, our Facebook pages, and also pages for all the individual shows that we play here. And of course, again, We are alive. I know that now we've gone 24 seven that most of the day we're playing uh, old shows uh, as we've only been a 24 seven station for a couple weeks now. And I'm kind of, you know, making plans for what we're going to do for the future But so far, we're just playing old shows. We have plenty of them, and uh, people seem to enjoy them because there's a lot of people listening to them. So it's uh, gone pretty good so far. So, But at 7 o'clock, Tuesday through Thursday, we are live. So you can call into the show, uh, just so you know. And again, if you're listening at 7 o'clock on September 28th, (laughs) <laughs> 2016 then we are here live because of course you could be listening to this later so um and again thank you for listening so tonight we have a very important show actually the next two shows because this is i'm making this into a two-part show because i have so in, so much information to cover if by some reason i end up covering it all in one show uh, then we won't do two parts but i seriously doubt this is going to happen so it's scheduled as a two-part show that we will be talking about today and tomorrow and 
What we are going to talk about is something that I've mentioned over and over again and really is one of the main themes of the show. So I talk about that the goal, if I were to put the goal of the show into a sentence, it would be to promote the ideas of true freedom and liberty and what I believe those are, which is doing whatever you want as long as you don't hurt anybody else or their property and respecting others' freedom. Because obviously if you don't respect the freedom of others, you'll probably do something to their property or hurt them or not care about doing that. Now, of course, that excludes you know self-defense. But outside of that, hurting anybody or their property. So what we're going to talk about tonight is the whole reason for promoting the ideas of true freedom and liberty to get the ideas out there to people to try to stop the government from achieving its goal which I believe is to control every aspect of your life ultimately. So, well, to control everything, but uh, along with that, controlling every aspect of your life. So, you know, also controlling corporations and things like that. But I mean, it all, it all goes in together. You know, if they're controlling uh, small businesses or controlling this or that, it all affects people. So it all has to do with controlling every aspect of everyone's life. And all of the ways that they've either moved in that direction and already have implemented things or that they have... Um, started to implement things or started talking about it or starting the conversation. So the preparation that they're doing, because I, I think now they're really in a preparation stage. As far as I've talked about this before, building the infrastructure to totally take over everything. Things like, and we'll get into detail about a lot of this stuff, like, for example, their spy network and what they're doing with collection of data is an example of, okay, they're putting in the infrastructure so they have a setup where they're able to access and collect all this data. Now, they're not doing it just for the fuck of it. They have a reason behind it. And they have a reason behind everything that they do. So when you look at all these things, they all go together. Uh, they're all part or it's like a puzzle and these are all the different pieces. And I, I might be missing some things or forgot about some things. I made a list of a whole bunch of stuff and I could probably do shows on the majority of things that I've written in this list. And I may have done shows in the past on some of the things like yesterday, we did a show on uh, cashless society and DNA database. And those are two things that are part of this whole thing. And we'll briefly mention those. So what these next two shows are doing is really going through all of these things and kind of linking them together to this whole big plan of controlling every aspect of your life and just turning the U.S. really into a government that is similar to, I mean, I, I think it's already at this point where it's an oligarchy and we'll talk about that, but where it, it it's essentially just people 
that are totally ruled by the government. And if they get out of line, they go to jail or get killed. And, you know, if I was to rate, if we're talking about one to 10 and I was to rate where we're at, you know, I would say we're, we're definitely past five. We're probably, it's hard to say because there are probably things that I haven't even thought of, but I would say at minimal a seven, you know, I don't think they're that far away from putting everything together. And the more the technology, the the more technology that they get, the easier it's going to be for them. I mean, the Nazis and the Stasi in East Germany were able to, especially East Germany, because the Nazis were able to do it, but the, for the majority of time that they were doing it, they were at war. And things are different, I think, when you're at war because people are more supportive to an extent, even though, of course, the things that they were doing, I don't know how um, even being at war people can support them. But it, I think it's a different type of atmosphere there when you're at war and that may be something that the United States ends up doing to save the or try to save the dollar or the petrodollar and we may end up in World War 3 um or it may be more of a proxy war World War 3 where it's fought through different countries and covert operations and hacking and all of those type things and some people would say we're already in World War 3 technically it's just all proxy and uh hacking in the systems and all that stuff already that that's already taking place but the East Germans were able to do it for what, maybe 40, 50 years. And they didn't have half the technology that we have today, yet they were still able to track people and have the secret police and all of that. Now they didn't have as many people, but I don't think that matters. It's the setup of the the structure how you structure it because it doesn't matter how many people as long as you're organized each city has its own uh organization to watch over that city and then they all kind of link up to the central location which would be washington so i think that's really irrelevant but they were able to do that and openly do it they didn't do it in secret and and the government now it's semi secret because it's not most of the things i'm going to talk about are not secret things it's not stuff that is in is debatable um some of it is coming to conclusions based off the information that i come to what i think they're going to do but a lot of it they're already doing or they're already talking about doing it's not a secret and people don't view it the way they should be viewing it and would they be viewing it differently 20 30 40 years ago i would think so but there's that idea of well this is america this is the united states it can't happen here larkin rose actually made a documentary film uh you can find it on youtube called It Can't Happen Here. I think that's the name of it. Um, it's something to that effect. But meaning that, you know, it, it, when the United States does something, it's always in the name of good. And they could do the same thing or worse than another country. When the other country does it, they're bad. Just like I had mentioned before in Iraq, you have the army invade Iraq they're there for they're technically still there I, I, I know iraq's a mess now between isis and i know there's the, the militaries there and there may be other militaries there i haven't really i've heard some stuff but haven't really kept up with exactly what's going on in iraq uh but 
I do know that ISIS has captured some cities. I don't know if they were then thrown out and whatever. But uh, the point being, prior to that, when the U.S. military was there in full force, but the actual war was over. So say five years after they killed Saddam Hussein and they're still there and there's people that are attacking the military. And I'm not even talking about organized uh, terrorist groups because Iraq really didn't have that. And uh, you had people that said, fuck, there's military in our country. We're under martial law by the u.s military essentially what are we supposed to do and people would criticize iraqis for attacking the u.s military and i'm sorry but to me that's totally understandable now there's of course a difference between attacking civilians and an occupying army they were occupying their country so if we did that, or if the people in the United States did that, if there was an army that was occupying the U.S. and everybody grabbed their gun and started shooting at them, we'd be looked at as heroes. But when the people of Iraq do it, they're enemy combatants. So... It's, I guess it depends on how you look at it, but once the war was over and they were no longer fighting the army and you're talking about people have, that have the army in their fucking, the U S army in their neighborhood. And you know, what do you expect them to do? So it's a total double standard. And most people think of it that way. I don't know why, because the people making these decisions are, of course, politicians and the, you know, joint chiefs and generals and whatnot. So, but ultimately, you know, the president. So, along with, you know, Congress, if they're declaring war, and in that case, they actually did. I don't know how much they were able to uh, be involved in exactly what went on. I think there was probably a committee within either the House or the Senate that was more involved than your average uh, representative or senator, but still... um, that's how people kind of look at it. So why they don't see these things, I don't know. Because one, I think eight out of the 10 planks of the Communist Manifesto is being, uh, is in effect in the United States. And that's just a fact. Not only that, you have all of these other things that are going on that if they were going on in other countries, I'm sure people would point the fingers at that country or at that country's leader and be like, what the fuck? Like Tiananmen Square in China. We've had our worse than that uh, recently a bunch of times. And people don't look at it the same way. So tonight we're going to go through these things or start to go through these things and then continue through tomorrow and try to put them all together. And then from there, try to look at how can we stop a government takeover of all our rights and freedoms, if we can at all. And it's definitely going to take people that see these things for what they are. Because one person or even 10 people, 100 people, it's not going to do anything. Whether 
it, it's a, a, a violent situation or whether it's a protest situation or whatever. And I'm not advocating violence. I've already talked about I only advocate self-defense. And I don't think it's possible to get any of the rights that have been taken away or make any change without some kind of threat of force and some, I guess, small battles, I would say, all in the name of self-defense, not a, a attacking anybody. But if you could get a couple million people to take to the streets, then I, I don't think that would be necessary. But the thing I do know is that forget about the system. First of all, the system. So we'll talk about this first before we get into the specifics, but the system, and there was a study on this is an oligarchy. It's elections are rigged. First of all, and they're not rigged in the ballot box, although they could if they wanted to because it's all computerized. And they had hearings in Congress, and they already admitted that they could rig them if they wanted to. So worst case is they would rig them, I believe. But because of the money, the political parties, and the propaganda and all that, they don't have to rig them. They can brainwash and... I need a new word because I hate saying brainwash, but they can manipulate people to vote for who they want. And when I say they, I'm talking about the powers that be for those who never heard me say that before. When I say the powers that be, and I don't know exactly who they are. So I, I just say they're a combination of, you know, billion dollar corporations, um, billionaires and people that are part of the semi-secret societies that aren't part of government, but they have meetings to discuss government, like the Trilateral Commission, the CFR and whatnot. And some politicians, I think behind the scenes, have some say in some things, but I think a lot of them, like you know, uh, in Congress just are told to vote a certain way and they're paid off and they vote that way. So those are the powers that be, you know, how I view them because we really don't know. And it could be a, a lot of people that we never even heard of billionaires that we've never heard of. And those are the smart ones because you wouldn't want to be out there you know, we know the Rockefellers and the Rothschilds and whatever. And I think that there is so much more to it. And there's people that we have no idea. Anybody who has a foundation is involved, I think, in, in on some level. So like, you know, the Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation got involved in Common Core and talked about we need population to decrease population and the Rockefeller Foundation and these people that have enough money to start these foundations and then start to get into philanthropy is what they'll call it. But really, it's they use it as a front to control uh, different things. So, you know, the Ford Foundation is another one. And I think they were involved in helping the Nazis prior to World War II. You know, World War II, from what I understand, it never would have happened if American companies didn't fund Hitler. They wanted it to happen. And then they essentially uh, exported it over to the United States, literally, uh, in some cases with Operation Paperclip, which we'll talk about where they brought all these Germans over, scientists and teachers and doctors and whatnot. And they also brought over the whole concept, uh, I think, as well. So 
the U.S. is essentially an oligarchy, which means that these elite, these powers that be, pretty much run everything, meaning that you don't have a say in government. They run everything. Now, that doesn't mean because I know people are going to say, well, what about, you know, well, I did this and help change this locally and there's exceptions and there's minor things but there's nothing that in the big scheme of things means all that much there's not something that is you know really important to their plans of control that somehow is going to be, uh, you know, you're going to be able to do something about, at least not long term, maybe short term, maybe you'll get lucky, but I, I doubt even that. And the only reason I say that is because they like to keep the illusion of freedom at the same time. Like I had people tell me, well, one person say, well, if that was the case, then you wouldn't be able to do your radio show. They'd come in and shut you down. Well, why would they bother doing that? For one, I mean, I'm reaching a minimal amount of people. And out of the people I'm reaching, a lot of them already have the same ideas as me anyway. And if they did try to shut me down, of course, I would be right back on talking about them shutting me down and I try to tell whoever I could of what happened so it it wouldn't make any sense you know so they don't care about shit like that yes if you're big enough they may go after you if you're a threat to their goals to what they're trying to accomplish and you're getting in the way of that somehow, then yeah. Besides that, then they're not going to bother with you unless you piss them off and they just want to fuck with you. But, um, and I have been fucked with by police and one of the times was strange and it, it felt like it was before I was on the radio, but I was already doing, um, you know, post and on Facebook and activism and stuff like that. So uh, who knows what really happened, but so we're basing this on the premise that we live in an oligarchy at this point. And this is proof of it right here. I mean, You look at the presidential elections. They said right before the debate that a poll, and they're talk that, and that's all they talk about too. So they distract you by talking about the elections all the time, which are meaningless. They make it out to like the Super Bowl, and they're meaningless because they're rigged. And the majority, what they said was for the poll that the majority of the people don't want either candidate. So what does that tell you? How can you have uh, any type of say in government or fair elections? You have two people that the majority of people don't want as president. So what does that tell you right there? It's controlled. It's controlled by, you know, between the parties and the money. It's they pick who they want and they put them in front of you. And they give you the illusion that, oh, you have a choice. Larkin Rose does a great uh, analogy on it. Like, you know, he talks about somebody knocking on your door and saying, you know, about collecting taxes and saying that, well, if you don't want me to do it, you know, my cousin Bubba over here, you can pick between me and him to uh, decide where your taxes are going to go. So, were for the purposes of this conversation and tomorrow's show and not just for the purposes of that I mean this is what I believe and again there's been a study and in the information points to this is an oligarchy so 
you live in a country where you don't have any say. And the Constitution is violated over and over again. It's not like, well, you don't have any say, but at least they follow the Constitution. No, they don't. They follow it when they feel like it. They try to act like they're following it as much as they can because, again, illusion of freedom. They don't want people out in the streets. And that's where, you know, East Germany... It was obvious they did what they did and people still didn't do shit. So the further what's scary is the further that the government goes. And that's why they do it slowly, because they kind of uh, not kind of, but they introduce people to stuff slowly and get them accustomed to it. And then it becomes normal and then they move on to the next thing. But. If the people of East Germany didn't do much about it, I mean, some people try to escape over the wall and got shot. They literally would shoot people. And they didn't do anything about it, and that was out in the open. Uh, What's scary is as they continue to do all this stuff and nobody's doing anything about it, the more and more they know that, hey, we can get away with more. It's just like with anything. If you're in a relationship, whether it's a friend or a significant other or whatever, if they know that they can get away with shit, they're going to push it as far as they can. And and the government is going to do the same thing. They're going to push things as far as they can, and they're going to continue to push things. And as people don't react to anything you know some things are like tests even you know to see okay is anybody going to do anything and then if people did they might back off a little but and i think that's kind of what happened with guns that was really the only thing that anyone really uh did anything about and they not that they went out and protested because they didn't have to but they made it uh clear that this is not okay and people were starting to uh start an uproar and okay if this passes what's going to happen and also the you know attacking syria that was the, another thing so they could they still still could have done uh, those things if they wanted but they backed off them although the gun uh thing what went through congress so that was a little different and but the uh with syria that was obama and obama still could have done it but he wanted to kind of keep that illusion of freedom and he didn't want to be the one you know left uh holding the whatever the saying is (laughs) is, uh at the end of it you know to blame so he backed off it but There's all these things that are are happening and no one's really saying or doing anything. You know, they just forget about it. Like the spying, that's huge. You have a whole agency that can go into your computer and turn on your camera. So, and your phone and they're collecting all your data and your emails and your phone calls and all of this shit. And they, they try to make it sound like, Oh, we, we don't do that anymore. Or they were some bill and the bill didn't do anything. It was like the USA freedom act or some bullshit. And that's something I suggest people do because I kind of stopped doing it, but I still get some emails and I found out about a bill that's important and I'm going to talk about from it. So What it does is I know that I'm not going to be able to stop any of these bills. They're just going to do whatever they want. But what I am going to be able to do is talk about them and let people know, like, look what the government's trying to do now. Now, technically, they don't even need any bills. They can just do whatever they want. But they go through the motions and, again, illusion of freedom. They want to have a certain percentage of people that believe in this bullshit. And believe it or not, there's a lot of people who still think this is a free country. At least they talk like it. 
And I'm like, you know, I feel like it's I'm in a fucking dreamland or illusion or something. I'm like, you know, I hear people talk and I'm like, what the fuck are you talking about? It's like it's so fake. Um, I can't explain it. It's like it's surreal because I know it's all bullshit. It's such bullshit, especially politicians when you hear them talk. So we'll start with, I kind of broke these down into different categories. And being that we talked about this yesterday as well, we'll start with databases. And with databases, it's all about collection of data. And, you know, knowledge is power. And that's the same thing with the government. The more information they have on you, the more power they have on you, the better for them. And as I was talking about the spying, this is not debatable. This happened and continues to happen. The government is spying on everybody. Um, They're not necessarily viewing everybody's data, obviously, because that would be impossible. But they can do keyword searches. And I don't know what they have running regarding algorithms. And supposedly they have hundreds of programs. um, And that has to do with data collection, uh, analyzing that data, and things along those lines. Now, what they actually do with the average person, whether they run everybody's data through uh, a specific machine that analyzes it for keywords or looks for certain things, um, I don't know. But the other thing is if they want to, so if they need to get to you for some reason, you know, um, they want to hold something over your head. They want you to cooperate with them. There, there's so many things. Uh, when you think of somebody having all this data on you, now, anybody probably under shit or over, you know, 18, 19, well, maybe 20, at least 21, probably doesn't have their whole, uh, you know, government school data in a database. It may even be higher because we don't know when they started this. And we don't know at what level of information they were getting at this point. So it may be anybody under 30 has most of their data Um, As far as what they told the public, it was more of Common Core. So whether it was part of Common Core or not will make a difference on where it started. But I do know this. Anybody starting school now, their whole life is going to be part of an NSA or government database. Well, both. I mean, it's going to be in the NSA database, but... You know, they share data with other agencies and that data from school will go along with this data. And that's kind of um, getting ahead of myself because that's a kind of separate thing altogether. But um, Common Core is another uh, database. So but just to make the point that your whole life will be in a database essentially. And we'll get into the specifics more on the common core information um, a a little later or right after uh, we go through this. But, but if they want to know, you know, it's not something that you would sit and think about as far as, okay, well, what can they do with this data? I haven't done anything illegal. Well, one What's legal now might not be legal later. And also, they have things like, you know, when you take a test and it's supposed to analyze 
certain things about your personality or categorize you into a certain personality type. You know, they'll come up with things like that and come up with the fact that maybe you're a threat, even though you've done nothing based on all the data they collected. Or again, like I said, use it against you in other ways. Um, There's so many things they can do with this data that you wouldn't just normally think of. But trust me, they've thought of it. Not to mention, as I said, they can turn your cameras on. So fuck you. I'm giving the finger to all my cameras. Um, If they want to. And like right now, I don't care because I would uh, at some point I might broadcast on YouTube. So if you guys uh, want to watch my show through one of the cameras, um, I guess that's fine. But um, <laughs> and not to say that they're doing that, but it, they do have and I'll go into this later. Uh, these are localized these anti-terrorist uh, places that probably have access to all this data as well. So it's not like you're talking about one place. It might be one place where the data is mainly stored or a couple places and, you know, you're just tapping into that data. But they're doing things the way you know you would, you know, regionally, and then it, it rolls up to the federal government. So, if people question, well, how could they do that, control everything everybody does and all of that? Well, they've already done it in places, for one. And two, you do it regionally. And they have done it regionally with fusion centers already. They have 72 of them. I believe it was 72. There may be more now. There may be things, anti-terrorist uh bases if you want to call them that or offices that we're not even aware of or some new type thing i mean money disappears all the time there's plenty of it that's not listed in the budget the cia sells drugs for a fucking reason you know they keep the money um, you had the day before 9 11 three trillion dollars disappeared that's not the only time and I, I, at one point, I thought, you know, oh, okay, that was the only time. Not that that makes a difference, because three trillion dollars is a lot of fucking money that was unaccounted for. So basically, if you're looking through anybody who knows anything about a financial statement, and you don't even really have to, but or you're looking at your bank statement and re- and reconciling it, and you can't account for three trillion dollars. Meaning, okay, I spent money on this. I wrote a check for this. Uh, $3 tri- trillion dollars is missing from my bank account, but I don't have an expense to match it up to. I don't have a charge of $3 trillion that I spent it on. So that's what happens all the fucking time. So whether the money's going to the CIA, anti-terrorist stuff, fucking FEMA camps, I don't know. And that's not something I listed on here because I don't really have evidence of FEMA camps. We essentially have prison camps anyway. I mean, that's what prisons are. They're fucking prison camps. And the majority of people in them are political prisoners because I I saw a stat... um, in a uh, from drugs inc that every 42 seconds somebody gets arrested for cannabis every 42 seconds and this was 2014 think about that in the u.s now i could do a calculation and figure out how many people per day but even if you say every 60 seconds right that's 60 people an hour times 24 hours which would be what, like eighteen hundred, like two thousand people or something, or over two thousand people a day. That is ridiculous. So, the jails are filled with people for possession of drugs, 
for selling of drugs that didn't commit any other crimes. You know, it's one thing if you're in jail for possession of drugs and murder (laughs) or drug dealing and murder, you know, get rid of the drug dealing and just charge the person with the murder. And okay, I understand that. Although I don't agree with prisons are, um, that's another thing that I, I didn't put on this uh, list. I did put the injustice system. So when I get to that, I'll have to talk about prisons because they are very inhumane, um, no matter what you did, because when you're talking about the government, And I know that I'm not saying that some of these people don't deserve to be there or even deserve to be tortured. I think race, racist, (laughs) rapists, you know, what they deserve is different than what the government should be allowed to do to them. And the death penalty is a perfect example of that. I'm not against the death penalty because I believe that the people that are sentenced to death that actually did it, you know, that's one reason that people are against it because what if you kill the wrong person? It's not like you can bring them back um, where if you find out somebody's innocent and they're in jail, you can let them out. Although you wasted all those years of their life were wasted and they can't get those back, but they can at least get out and live some of their life. Um, And, of course, they'll be a millionaire because, you know, they'll sue the government and we'll all have to pay for it. But if you kill somebody, obviously you can't bring them back. But I'm not against the death penalty because I think that they don't deserve it. Like some people just... You know, oh, because murdering somebody is wrong and whatever. And I think in general, yes, murdering people are wrong. But that it's it's wrong to uh, kill these people that have committed uh, heinous crimes. Now, I don't think it's wrong to kill people that have killed and murdered and raped Um, Depending on the circumstances, I mean, you know, um, people that have like tortured and raped and killed women and stuff like that, they definitely, they deserve to be tortured and all this shit. However, my problem, of course, is the government does not have the right to do that to somebody and you can't start giving them the right well we'll decide what people we do this to it's just like the um sex offender database that has branched out to other crimes and i'll talk about that in a minute so being that i i I mentioned common core and the common core database And I'll talk about Common Core itself later, but there's like 25 different questions or something like that that they have to answer, and that's just to begin with, and that's the data that they put in the uh, database. And I remember the story that Nevada got all new computers and set up their database and whatever. And then from there, it's like everything you do is kept in that database. Now, before, yeah, they kept records of shit, but they were all written and in folders, and it's easy to lose that information or throw it away or whatever. But when it comes to data that's stored in a database that is online and most likely connected to federal databases, they're going to have a whole profile on you with all that information starting from when you started school and everything you did. And I even believe that they're going to use that to point people in directions of with all these uh, programs that they're going to create with algorithms and stuff like that, that they may have might have created already that they're going to 
create a society by this point that your job will be chosen for you based on, you know, a variety of factors that they analyze from all the data they collect. And they'll be able to not only make sure everybody has a job, but in their opinion, you're in the job that you should be in, like shit like that. I see things like that happening in the future. And of course, there's been movies like that as well and where you think they get the idea from. So that's pretty much the common core database. What I was just mentioning about um, sex offender databases, and I don't think people are aware of this, they have gun crime databases. And you can look these up online. I have talked about it before. I actually called in a free talk live before and mentioned it. I've never heard this on any fucking newscast or on any other show or anything. I never, I, I heard about it. You know how I actually heard about it is Adam Kokesh was arrested, basically SWAT teams. It was ridiculous because he went to Washington, D.C., where they were supposed to give people their uh, right, not from the Constitution, but from just being a human, to defend themselves and own a gun. And he loaded a gun uh, in Washington, D.C. on camera of all play. I mean, that they didn't catch him doing it, nothing. So then they raided his house. But one of the parts of his sentence was that he was a registered gun crime offender. So when I heard that, nobody went any further that I'm aware of on that there's a databases of gun crimes. But I heard that and I'm like, they have gun crime fucking databases now. So I started looking and I I found places um chicago being one of them dc and there's probably more where you can go online and put in a fucking address and they'll give you the name of the people that live in that area that have been convicted of a gun crime it's insane it's the same thing of a sex offender database and that's why and this is the same concept of freedom of speech that's why you don't do that for anything, no matter how bad it is. Meaning that, you know, sex offenders, first of all, a lot of them now are people that took naked pictures of themselves or sent, you know, a naked picture to a 15 year old when they were 17 and ridiculous shit. But if we're talking about the actual child molesters, you know, so they make an exception for that and violate people's rights is basically what they did because they say that what they did was they said, well, being a child molester is such a bad and heinous crime that we want people to know if a child molester moves into their neighborhood so they can be aware and what watch that person and be extra careful Um You know, there could be child molesters that have never been arrested. So really, it's it's kind of ridiculous in a way. But because they're a child molester, it's okay to violate their rights. But see, what happens is it never stops there. It doesn't just stop and say, well, if you're this bad, we'll do it. But we will never do it for anybody else. Of course, I'm sure that's what they said at the time when they implemented registry of sex crime offenders. Because I think you also have to do that, um, that they have to like register and where they live and shit like like they have to do the same shit. Now, I'm not 100 percent positive about that. I do know they're in a database and you can look them up. Um, Not all cities have that, but. Some of them do, and I went online to a few of them. But at the time, I'm sure they said that, well, this is only for child molesters. But you look at that, and really, what does that even do? So you know that, okay, a child molester lives a couple houses down from me. 
But again, you, you should really, it, it shouldn't change how you um, are with your kids because there could be potential child molesters that have never been caught. So what's the fucking difference? And I don't know. I, I don't think there's nothing you can really do except protest and try to get him to move or something or harass him or violate his rights um, not that I feel bad for child molesters, although a lot of them were molested themselves, and that's why. But that doesn't give them a pass because just because something was done to you doesn't give you the right to go and do it to somebody else because you're fucking damaged over it. So I don't feel bad for them. However, you know, you either believe in rights and freedoms or you don't. You can't make exceptions. So it's same with freedom of speech. You can't say, well, we're just going to make hate speech illegal. And then it's, well, who determines what hate speech is? Or we're just going to stop like the Ku Klux Klan, you know, or we're just going to stop skinheads from, you know, having their rallies. But everybody else is OK because it doesn't stop there. So. How far does this does this go now it's guns what's what's next so a lot of people didn't know that i'm sure yesterday we talked about the dna database that police are actually tricking people to give their dna i talked about an example that was in an article where they they're they're doing it to teenagers mostly and kids probably junior high kids i don't know how far they go because if they're doing it with like you know, kids in elementary school, that's pretty bad. I wouldn't put it past police because they're pieces of shit, but that's just wrong. But to do it to high school kids that don't know any better is wrong as well. And I had said yesterday, you know, you can't have it both ways. You can't say, well, at 18, you have the right to do this or or before 18, you don't have the right to do all these things, but you have the right to give permission to give your DNA. You can't ha- you can't do that. I mean, they do it because they do whatever they want. But, you know, either you can sign things and give consent or you can't. So or you have a special law for that thing, like, you know, the age of consent for sex in Nevada is 16. So that's another database that we had talked about. Of course, there's medical databases because of Obamacare. That was one of the things that was in there. And we'll talk more about this when we talk about Obamacare. But all your medical records are in databases now. Um, of course, there's fingerprint databases. The DMV has their database and all the information they have in there. Um, With the real ID, they now take basically all your DMV information and put it in a government database. And really, (laughs) I'm sure it's in there anyway, whether you got a real ID or not. What's the fucking difference at this point? They're taking all your information. Um, All your banking information, I'm sure is being, you know, sucked up by the NSA and put all together. Um, Your criminal records, anything with court, even tickets, all of that. Uh, They have the license plate readers that track where you go. And they have the terrorist no-fly list, which Hillary again argued that If you're on a no-fly list, which they come up with this list on their own, no due process, no nothing, you shouldn't be able to buy a gun. But there's no process to get on. You don't – they can just say, we're going to put this person on the the no-fly list because we don't want them to have a gun. So you're totally eliminating due process. But they won't admit that. They're like, well, if you're on this list – 
well, who fucking manages the list and who comes up with who's on the list or not? I've never heard anybody talk about that. Why don't you tell us that uh, before you start talking about, well, if you're on this list, you can't have a gun because there's no due process there. You're taking away people's rights because you put them on a list. That's like saying, you know, we're going to have a freedom of speech list where these people don't have freedom of speech. Or we're going to have a no voting list, and they do. If you're a felon, you can't vote. Well, some states have actually changed that. I don't think it matters if you're a felon or not. You should be able to vote. That's ridiculous. Although, who really gives a fuck about voting <laughs> when it's all rigged anyway? But if you want to vote, um, I had mentioned that there's the ballot questions. And in Nevada, one of them is to legalize uh, marijuana for recreational purposes. But the other thing I also said is that it will come out the way they want it to come out. If they really don't want it, the powers that be don't want it to be legal, it's not going to be legal. They'll, especially with the computerized machines now. Now, ultimately, they can, you know, rig them if they want to. And then you can have uh, other people, and this is what they do in state elections. They have people that don't live in the state or have nothing to do with that state you know, take millions and invest in, you know, commercials and shit like that and campaign against somebody or for somebody. So it's it's not just the people that live in the state that control what goes on there. So um, anyway, so that's pretty much databases. They have a database on so many different things and they can tie these all together through your social security number, which is a unique ID and link up all, as long as the social security numbers on it, they can look, they can take all these databases and link all the information and have a nice big profile on you of all this data. And with their data, I would call them data mining programs, actually. And, and data mining, from what I understand, is just going through data and being able to make sense out of it and put it in a format that you can do something with. So they have all these programs to do all this shit. I, I As I've mentioned, I work a lot with data and, and pulling data and um, writing uh code to pull uh, data from databases. So databases is something I actually do know about. So what I'm going to do is take a quick break, uh, play a couple clips, and then when we come back, we will continue uh, with all of these things that the government is doing. I'll try to get as far as I can tonight. Um, of course, there's no way I'm going to get through everything because some of this stuff is obviously going to require uh, more than uh, others. But um, databases is a very imp- – I don't want to just gloss over this. I mean, having all your information, and I just went through – a about a dozen different things that the government has access to. And again, they will do things that you've never even thought of with this information. Information is power. Remember that. So we will be back after these clips. And again, if you want to call in, 702-470-7664, 702-470-7664. Or Skype, which is better because it sounds clearer. Send a user request to nonpartisan liberty for all. It's all one word. And if you forget the number or the uh, username, you can go to nonpartisan liberty for all.com. It has all that information there as well as other. Uh, things like I had mentioned articles and links to our Facebook page and uh, Twitter and all of that fun stuff. So 
We'll be right back after this nonpartisan liberty for all.com. Are you looking for a podcast that talks about life, the universe, and everything? Listen in to the Illumination Hour, Monday nights, 10 p.m. Eastern, 7 p.m. Pacific. Listen live at Spreaker.com or NonpartisanLibertyForAll.com. We're also on SoundCloud, Spreaker, Twitter, Tumblr, YouTube, and iTunes. The Illumination Hour, brought to you by Nonpartisan Liberty For All Media and Radio Network. And your host, Ellen Stallone. Because a spark can illuminate the world. When should you shoot a cop? That question, even without an answer, makes most law-abiding taxpayers go into knee-jerk conniptions. The indoctrinated masses all race to see who can be first and loudest to proclaim that it is never okay to forcibly resist law enforcement. In doing so, they also inadvertently demonstrate why so much of human history has been plagued by tyranny and oppression. In an ideal world, cops would do nothing except protect people from thieves and attackers, in which case shooting a cop would never be justified. In the real world, however, far more injustice, violence, torture, theft, and outright murder has been committed in the name of law enforcement than has been committed in spite of it. To get a little perspective, try watching a documentary or two about some of the atrocities committed by the regimes of Stalin or Lenin or Chairman Mao, or Hitler, or Pol Pot, or any number of other tyrants in history. Pause the film when the jackboots are just about to herd innocent people into the cattle cars, or just about to gun them down as they stand on the edge of a ditch, and then ask yourself the question, when should you shoot a cop? Keep in mind the evils of those regimes were committed in the name of law. And as much as the statement may make people cringe, the history of the human race would have been a lot less gruesome if there had been a lot more cop killers around to deal with the state mercenaries of those regimes. Now, people don't mind when you point out the tyranny that has happened in other countries, but most have a hard time viewing their own country, their own government, and their own law enforcers in any sort of objective way. Having been trained to feel a blind loyalty to the ruling class, of the particular piece of dirt they live on, also known as patriotism, and having been trained to believe that obedience is a virtue, the idea of forcibly resisting law enforcement is simply unthinkable to many. Literally, they can't even think about it. And humanity has suffered horribly because of it. It is a testament to the effectiveness of authoritarian indoctrination that literally billions of people throughout history have begged and screamed and cried in the face of authoritarian injustice and oppression, but only a tiny fraction have ever actually lifted a finger to try to stop it. Even when people can recognize tyranny and oppression, they still usually talk about working within the system, the same system that's responsible for the tyranny and the oppression. People want to believe that the system will, sooner or later, provide justice. The last thing they want to consider is that they should illegally resist. That if they want to achieve justice, they must become criminals and terrorists, which is what anyone who resists legal injustice is automatically labeled. But history shows all too well that those who fight for freedom and justice almost always do so illegally, i.e. without the permission of the ruling class. If politicians think that they have the right to impose any law they want, and cops have the attitude that 
as long as it's called law, they will enforce it. What is there to prevent complete tyranny? Not the consciences of the lawmakers or their hired thugs, obviously, and not any election or petition to the politicians. When tyrants define what counts as law, then by definition, it is up to the lawbreakers to combat tyranny. Pick any example of abuse of power, whether it's the fascist so-called war on drugs, the police thuggery that has become so common, the random stops and searches now routinely carried out in the name of security, such as at airports, border checkpoints that aren't even at the border, sobriety checkpoints, and so on, or any other example. Now ask yourself the uncomfortable question. If it's wrong for cops to do these things, doesn't that imply that the people have a right to resist such actions? And of course, state mercenaries don't take kindly to being resisted, even nonviolently. If you question their right to detain you, interrogate you, search you, invade your home, and so on, you are very likely to be tasered, physically assaulted, kidnapped, put in a cage, or shot. If a cop decides to treat you like livestock, whether he does it legally or not, you will usually have only two options, submit or kill the cop. You can't resist a cop just a little and get away with it. He will always call in more of his fellow gang members until you are subdued or dead. Basic logic dictates that you either have an obligation to let law enforcers have their way with you or you have the right to stop them from doing so, which will almost always require killing them. Politely asking fascists to not be fascist has a very poor track record throughout history. Consider the recent Indiana Supreme Court ruling, which declared that if a cop tries to illegally enter your home, it's against the law for you to do anything to stop him. Aside from the patent absurdity of it, since it amounts to giving thugs with badges permission to break the law and makes it a crime for you to defend yourself against a criminal, if he has a badge, Consider the logical ramifications of that attitude. There were once some words written on a piece of parchment, those words now known as the Fourth Amendment, that said that you have the right to be free from unreasonable searches and seizures at the hands of government agents. In Indiana today, what could that possibly mean? The message from the ruling class is quite clear and utterly insane. It amounts to this. We don't have the right to invade your home without probable cause, but if we do, you have no right to stop us and we have the right to arrest you if you try. Why not apply that to the rest of the Bill of Rights while we're at it? You have the right to say what you want, but if we use violence to shut you up, you have to let us. I can personally attest to the fact that that is the attitude of the U.S. so-called Department of Justice. Or maybe... You have the right to have guns, but if we try to forcibly and illegally disarm you and you resist, we have the right to kill you. Ask Randy Weaver or the Branch Davidians about that one. You have the right to not testify against yourself, but when we coerce you into confessing and call it a plea agreement, you can't do a thing about it. What good is a right? What does the term right even mean if you have an obligation to allow jackboots to violate your so-called rights? It makes the term absolutely meaningless. To be blunt, if you have the right to do A, it means that if someone tries to stop you from doing A, even if he has a badge and a politician's scribble, sometimes called law, on his side, you have the right to use whatever amount of force is necessary to resist that person. That's what it means to have an unalienable right. If you have the unalienable right to speak your mind, a la the First Amendment, then if all else fails, you have the right to kill government agents who try to shut you up. If you have the unalienable right to be armed, then if all else fails, you have the right to kill government agents who try to disarm you. If you have the right to not be subjected to unreasonable searches and seizures, then, if all else fails, you have the right to kill government agents who try to inflict those upon you. Those who are proud to be law-abiding don't like to hear this and don't like to think about this, but what's the alternative? If you do not have the right to forcibly resist so-called legal injustice, 
That logically implies that you have an obligation to allow government agents to do absolutely anything they want to you, your home, your family, your neighbors, and so on. Really, there are only two choices. You are a slave, the property of the politicians without any rights at all, or you have the right to violently resist government attempts to oppress you. There can be no other option. Of course, on a practical level, openly resisting the gang called government is usually very hazardous to one's health. But there's a big difference between obeying for the sake of self-preservation, which is often necessary and rational, and feeling a moral obligation to go along with whatever the ruling class wants to do to you, which is pathetic and insane. Most of the incomprehensible atrocities that have occurred throughout history were due in large part to the fact that most people answer never to the question of when should you shoot a cop. The correct answer is when evil is legal, become a criminal. When oppression is enacted as law, become a lawbreaker. And when those violently victimizing the innocent have badges, become a cop killer. I am saying, would it be considered a criminal conspiracy for individual corporations and companies and large banking institutions in America to put together the money and the technology and the raw materials to build Adolf Hitler's Nazi Germany? Would that be considered a criminal conspiracy? Because in point of fact, Adolf Hitler's Nazi regime was built by American know-how, American money, General Motors, Ford Motor Company, General Electric, DuPont, uh, you go down the line, all the major corporations in America were with Adolf Hitler in business. That's where he got the money. Hey, an alien. Yes, I've traveled across space to check on the progress of your species. Cool. Shall I take you to our leader? Your what? Our leader, the guy in charge. The guy in charge of what? Well, in charge of everything. You have one guy in charge of everything? No, no, he's in charge of government. What is government? Well, government makes the rules for us. It tells us what we can do and what we can't do. So is government really smart? They come up with wise rules for you to follow? Well, mostly. But some of its rules are really stupid. Do you disregard those rules? No, we have to follow the rules, even if they are stupid or we disagree with them. Government punishes anyone who disobeys the rules. So you are slaves to government? No, 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 it's not like that at all. Government works for us, the people. It serves us. We're the boss. It tells you what to do, and it punishes you with violence if you disobey it, and yet you're its boss? Yeah. But there are some things government does that you don't like. Well, yeah, not everything government does is popular, like spending on wars, for example. What is a war? It's when government basically spends the people's money on weapons and soldiers and then sends them over to the other side of the world to kill a bunch of people over there and destroy their country. I don't like it that government does this. Well, I can see why you might not like that. Have you humans reached the stage where you generally consider stealing, enslaving and killing each other to be bad things? Oh yeah, we know that. Don't steal, don't attack, don't assault. But you give money to government and they use it to kill people. Well, yeah. But government does good things with tax money as well. Why don't you stop paying for the things you don't like and only pay for the good things it does? No, we can't do that. You can't just decide to stop paying taxes because... The rules say that everyone has to pay taxes. But the rules come from government, though, don't they? Yeah. 
So government made a rule which says that everyone has to pay them money. So everyone pays taxes because if they didn't, government would punish them using violence? Well, yes, but most people don't mind paying taxes. Most people feel obligated to pay taxes and obey government laws because it's for the good of society. Society needs government and that means we all have to pay taxes. So just to make sure I've got this straight, government makes the rules and you feel obligated to follow the rules, even the ones you don't like, and it tells you what to do and threatens to punish you if you don't do what it says, and it uses some of the money that it's taken from you using threats of violence to pay for things you don't like and actually think are immoral, like mass murder. Yeah, but we can ask it to please tell us to do smart things, and please don't take our money and use it to kill people. We're allowed to ask them to tell us to do what we want them to tell us to do. Are you guys just scared of this thing? Is government some huge monster that can just squish you at any moment if you disobey? No, government isn't a monster. Well, what is it then? Could you draw me a picture of it? Government isn't really the sort of thing you can draw a picture of. Maybe you could take me to it. Where is government? You mean the building? Government is a building. No, but the politicians who make up the government have buildings they work from. So government is a group of these politicians? Yeah. OK, so what species are these politicians? Well, they're... human. Like you? Yeah. So politicians are humans and they're government. You're a human, but you're not government. No. So it's the politicians, they're the ones that boss the rest of you around and make you do things you don't want to do and take your money using threats of violence. But even though you're all humans, you're not allowed to boss them around and take their money? No, they'd put us in a cage if we did that. But look, it's not like the politicians can just do whatever they want. Like, a politician can't just come up to me on the street and make me give him money. They can't do that. Politicians can only do things like that in their job, when they're working for government. Oh, so politicians aren't government. They just work for government. Yeah. OK, so government isn't a monster, and it isn't a building, and it's not politicians, it's something else. And it employs politicians, who are just regular humans, who get to order everyone else around and take their money. How does a regular human become a politician? Well, that's the great thing about our government. It's a democracy. And that means that the people actually have the power. Because we get to decide who among us get to be the politicians. We get to vote. And if a politician starts doing things we don't like, we can just replace him with someone else at the next election. So the people that get chosen to be politicians only get to boss people around and take their money for a short time. And then they go back to being regular humans? Exactly. That sounds like a powerful position to be in. But if you get to choose who does that, I assume that politicians are always the wisest, most honest, caring and respected people among you. Well, no, not really. I wouldn't say politicians are known for being honest, or wise, or caring. And they're certainly not the most respected people among us. Come to think of it, most politicians are lying, power-hungry crooks. The ones you chose? Yeah, they're always doing things we don't like. They use taxpayers' money to enrich themselves and their friends, and they never keep their promises to voters. They've been caught stealing and lying and taking bribes, and they mostly do what the big corporations want. Yeah, they're always doing stuff like that. They're completely corrupt. They're a bunch of lying crooks.
But you said that most humans know that stealing and beating each other up and killing are wrong. And you said that you have the power because you can change who's in charge. So why don't you just replace the lying, thieving, murderous, crooked politicians with some regular people? Well, we don't try to elect lying crooks. It just always turns out that way. But we have to have a government because some humans are nasty and might kill or enslave or steal. Civilization just couldn't survive without government. Let me get this straight. Because you're worried about the small number of nasty people that are willing to kill, enslave and steal, you think it's necessary for your survival to have a system where some humans among you, for a short while, get to call themselves the government, and they get to order everyone else around like slaves, and, if they want, commit mass murder overseas, using money they stole using threats of violence. Politicians get to kill, enslave and steal, because if they didn't, someone else might? And you try to elect good, honest people to be politicians, but what happens every time is that the people you elect turn out to be corrupt, evil, lying crooks. That's your system. Yeah, that's pretty much government. Nonpartisan liberty for all, and we are back. Um I wanted to get into uh, law enforcement, and that's probably all the time we'll have uh, for this show. But again, we will continue tomorrow. Um, For those who are just joining us, we are talking about all of the things that government is either planning things that they've talked about or things that they are currently doing to take ultimately that will lead to a total government takeover of every aspect of your life. And of course, there's not going to ever be one day where it's, you know, it goes from, okay, you have some freedom to now you have none. It's a incremental thing that's been going on for generations, really, um, is how I see it. But when I say law enforcement, um, that's just the, I try to categorize these. But really what I mean is, I should have called it the uh, injustice system. So meaning police to um, prosecutors, to judges, and uh, prisons. So I'm not going to talk about any specific laws in that section. We will talk about that, but not within this section. Um, I have a law section where we'll talk about some of these ridiculous laws that totally violate your rights. And I mean, pretty much I should do the opposite and talk about the laws that don't violate your rights because there are so many laws. It is just ridiculous. And it's not like they get rid of laws. And for people who have never thought about this, I mean, Just imagine how many years of laws that we have. And as we go further into the future, they're passing more and more laws, meaning in, say, you know, 1805, I don't think they passed as many laws as they do today. But there's still year after year, just more and more laws that are piling up on the books and rarely do laws get taken off. They'll talk about laws like, oh, we don't enforce that. It's, 
yeah, it's a law, but we don't enforce it. Well, if you don't enforce it, then fucking get rid of it. Because then that gives the police uh, another way to fuck with you. So I don't know how they could possibly now, of course, we just talked about databases. So that's one way I was going to say how they could possibly keep track of all these laws. But with databases, you know, they could type in something and then it will give you a crime. Say this person did this. Oh, okay, here's a crime. Um, And basically find a crime on whoever they want. I mean, they could probably go through all your data and your emails and all of that and find a crime if they want to arrest you. So say they're sitting around doing nothing and, oh, we need to find a some people to arrest because we need to generate some revenue. So let's go through all their data and see if we can find any crimes that they have committed and if we have enough information and issue warrants based off of that. So briefly, I'll go through how things were supposed to work, I guess, and then get into all the things that, of course, the government is doing to circumvent that. And I mean, even in the first place, the I've said the Constitution never gave people uh true freedom and liberty anyway. Um, It gave people more freedom than they, you know, a level of freedom that they didn't have before that and a level of freedom that was probably more than a lot of countries at the time. But it it still, to me, isn't or wasn't enough. I mean, now it's just ignored, so what's the difference? But the way the system was supposed to work, first of all, judges have way too much power, and we'll talk a little about that. Um, and the whole court system is, is fucked up. But the Constitution says nothing about police that, I'm aware of unless I'm missing something, but it does talk about the court system and it talks about the Supreme court and I believe appellate courts and judges. But from what I understand, the way the modern day system was supposed to work, if it was an actual justice system, that police would have to have enough evidence to arrest you for a crime um, the judge was supposed to be an impartial referee, basically, of a trial, not on the side of a, the government. But, of course, they work for the government. Usually they're people who can't make it as lawyers, and they run as uh, for office as a judge because they're fucking hacks who... Uh, can't make it as defense attorneys. And then, of course, you have the prosecutors who are supposed to also be fair. And if they don't believe they have a case or there's not enough um, uh, evidence or they believe you're not guilty because there's not enough evidence, they're not supposed to prosecute the case. But they do anyway. So the way it actually works is the judges on the side of the government, they're going to do whatever they can to help the prosecution win the case. And the prosecution is going to take all cases. They're going to try to settle them before they go to trial. Otherwise, they're not going to, you know, they couldn't possibly do it because they're arresting so many fucking people. Um, They're usually not going to drop anything unless it's just so blatant. They're going to they care about, you know, their conviction rate and all that. And if they get somebody to plead out, they consider that a conviction. And, you know, even if it's not an actual conviction, like on your record, I mean, they done their job because they got you to plead out as opposed to go to trial and be found not guilty. They don't care if you're guilty or not. Um, And neither does the judge. And 
that's pretty much how it works. And the police will go on the stand and fucking lie. Uh, of course, they might legitimately not remember, but they're supposed to take, you know, notes or go by their report um, in the event that they have to testify. I had a cop testify at my trial. Everything he said was no ref- recollection, except the one thing that he said, he somehow remembered me saying, oh, fuck you to him, though. He remembered that, but he didn't remember anything else. Yeah. And I didn't actually, that's not even what happened. But, um, or not fuck you to him, fuck you to his partner or something. I don't know. Which he wouldn't even have been able to hear it. So it, it was, it, court is is a fucking joke. It's It's like a casino, except the odds are 50 times worse. And I say that only in that, you know, because I like casinos, but only in that in a casino, the games are set up so the house uh, always wins. And that's how court is set up. The house is always going to win. And the lawyers know each other, so you go out and hire a lawyer. They know the judges. They know the prosecutors. Um, You're better off defending yourself unless it's a really serious case, like a murder case or something uh, like that. But anything else, you should just defend yourself. And I should have defended myself in my case. I I don't know how you actually uh, cross-examine yourself. Um how that works but that would be funny like you know you ask a question then sit in the witness stand then go back and ask the question and you know um i think they did that in a cartoon or something but along with you know all the things that i just mentioned yeah there's a lot more to it so First of all, the police, and of course, uh, almost everybody's aware of what's going on with the police, but they only have part of the story because they there's a certain amount of the population that all they know is what they hear in government media, and all they see is, you know, maybe they've seen like, what, eight, nine, ten people get killed by the police in the past couple years. Which, of course, it's, you know, four or five people a day, you know, 12 to 14, 1500 a year, things like that. And and most of them, um, I'd say about 90 something percent don't even fire at the police if they're even armed. And then you have this thing that happens and I read two stories today that it happened in. So two stories that I read, they did not say whether the person was armed or not. How would they not fucking know? So you're supposed to believe the police when they finally get to their story, whatever it may be, because obviously that's what they're doing. They're getting their story straight. They're seeing if there was any witnesses. They may be seeing if they can plant a fucking weapon. Um, That's the one thing that when a crime is committed, you'll usually at least get a general statement of what happened pretty quickly like the murders at the mall or whatever. Um, There was one in Minnesota and I think one in uh, D.C. um, Monday. So you'll usually um, get a, you know, you won't get all the details because they'll say, well, it's still under investigation. Um, But you'll get a general idea of what happened like what we know is that you know some people were stabbed and we don't you know we really can't say much more we don't know the motivation blah 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 but I mean you have a a story of what happened now when the police kill somebody especially when there's no fucking video 
And those are the ones I'm reading. There's so many where there's no video or um, for reasons that are a lot of times strange because they have dash cams and recorders, but there's no video. But they won't give any details except to say that um, this person was shot and killed. And that's all we can say. And they won't give any other information. Now, why is that? Now, of course, we know why it is. Because they're putting their story together. They're trying to protect their officers. There's no fucking way. So I have the most recent uh, stories of, I think it was from maybe a week ago or five days ago, these two stories where they don't say if the guys were armed or not. And if they were armed, they would have said they were armed. So if they come out and say that these guys were fucking armed, there is no way I'm going to believe that they were armed. Um, One of the biggest ones that you'll see is, oh, they came at me with a knife. And it will usually be multiple officers. And it doesn't really make a lot of sense. You know, I guess they could be mentally ill. But usually in a lot of those stories, it doesn't say anything about them being on drugs or mentally ill, even though, you know, they could make that up. But that is the easiest thing to make up if there's no video. But what happens is they're not going to come out and say that right away because they don't know who saw what. They don't know if there was like somebody, you know, looking out their fucking window when it happened or this or that. So they have to do a full investigation to find out who knows what, who saw what before they come up with their narrative. Because, again, there's no way that they don't know whether they had a weapon or not. They should at least be able to give enough information that, yes, we're still investigating, but this guy pulled out a gun and the officer shot him, or he pulled out a knife and the officer shot whatever. That never happens. But it happens in other cases. So you can't believe really anything you hear uh the police say and people take police the police's word as gospel as do the judges um it doesn't matter that you may have a whole bunch of more references than them or you're um you're more accomplished of a person or whatever just the fact that they're a cop and they passed some stupid exam and went through, you know, four to six months of police academy, that somehow means that they don't lie and that their word is better, uh, more credible than yours, even though that they have the reason to lie. So it's just so ridiculous that somehow cops have become the ultimate authority on all of these things. And really, there's no other alternative because if they're the only ones there and it's the person, the other person that was there is dead who's i mean there's nobody that can and it's not on video there's nobody that can dispute what they're saying if nobody's seen it you know and certain things you can't run ballistics on if if See, if they had a rule that they had to be fired upon, it would make it harder. But the fact that they don't, all they have to say is, you know, he had a gun or he had something that looked like a gun 
or knives are real easy, like I said, to plant. You know, you can take a knife and you just put it in his fucking hand. And there you go. Oh, he had a knife. They can even do it after the fact. So, um, it's just ridiculous. But, Again, even the stories that I'm talking about, and I had posted them on one of my pages, no one's going to hear about them anyway. Because most people, and they were actually the white people, but that's irrelevant too, because the majority of black people that are killed by police, you don't hear about neither. Actually, until like a couple years ago, unarmed people in general of all races were getting killed and nobody really heard about it, period. You'd only hear about it if it happened in the city you live in because they can't ignore that, like the local news. But as far as on a national level, you wouldn't hear about it. So the government media picks and chooses what they want to show And if it um, fits into the narrative, then they'll show it. If it doesn't, then they won't. And usually it will have to be on video. But they, they don't seem to question the police. They don't. I don't know. Well, they do, but they don't. It depends. If it, again, fits into the agenda. So... It, it it's like I have to keep saying the same thing over and over again because you just don't hear it anywhere. It's only independent media, and I'm barely media as it is, if you want to even call me that. So... That's what really goes on with the uh, murder by police, which is they get away with it. This is the other part of it. No matter what happens, they get away with it. Now, there have been cops who have gone to jail for actually committing crimes, like possession of drugs or selling drugs. or And I'm surprised that that even happens. But that has happened. But usually, if it has something to do with a cop harassing somebody, violating their rights, or killing them, or beating them, or anything like that, that's okay. And what will happen is the judges, as well as the um, prosecutors, will make sure that you know, he gets off if it actually goes to trial when it comes to those things. Because people don't, one, realize that jurors, a lot of them, at least the ones they pick, because they're able to pick from the jury pool on both sides. But um, when you have a case of a police officer, it's like they both want to get them off. So, um, but they listen to what the the instructions that the judge tells them. And I think that they are scared to not, you know, where you can find somebody not guilty uh, using things like jury nullification. Like if someone is charged with drugs and you think drugs should be legal, you can say not guilty. But most people don't realize that or are scared to go against the, um, instructions of the judges. So when you have a case presented in a way that the prosecutor wants the police to get off, the judge wants the police to get off. And of course the defense attorney is defending them. So they want them to get off. Um, most likely they're going to get off and then they can choose a, choose a judge trial. And that's how one of the Baltimore uh, cops, he did trial by judge. Of course the judge is going to say not guilty. So when it comes to police, 
they're better off probably doing trial by judge. But mo- most people, there's a huge percentage of the population that think the police are, you know, can get away with anything and are, you know, these great people that protect uh, people and keep them safe. And they, they don't do anything like that. But so you have a police force that can just murder, abuse, beat people, harass people, do whatever they want and not be held accountable. Plus they have the monopoly on force. Now, the other thing that really, one of the other things that really stands out when you look at things that the government is doing is all of these grants and training and uh, weapons uh, and tanks and things like that that they're getting, and they're getting them everywhere. You know, it's not just in big cities that they're getting Bearcats and automatic machine guns and automatic rifles and tanks and all of this stuff. I mean, they're definitely preparing for war. You know, there's no doubt. So if you put that together with the whole thing of federalizing the police. So, but before we get to that, um, you have suburbs, you have small little towns, you have everywhere. These are grants from the federal government or uh, extra weapons that they had had in Iraq or Afghanistan, and they're just giving them to the police most of the time. So why do they need all of these uh, things? And I can't believe somebody fucking said because, oh, the people have so many guns. It's just so ridiculous. But anyway, um, so, yeah, it's not like just areas of high crime. It's everywhere. And they want to or there's been talk of federalizing the police. The militarization of the police has been going on for like 10 years now. They've been getting these things. Um, But the federalization of the police, it's almost been going on anyway because they've been getting all their weapons from the federal government. They've been getting all this additional training, terrorist training and things like that from the federal government. And now they want to federalize the police. Now, whether they'll be able to do that or not, I don't know. But what that will do is and they're convincing people it's funny they're using the killing and murder of people as a reason to federalize the police now that they're not thinking about the fact that essentially the police are already federalized when it comes to uh, a lot of the training the weapons and all of this stuff so they want more government to get involved when the government is the one that is doing it in the first place. It's just, it's insane. But anyway, if the police were federalized, you would have essentially an army, an occupying army within the United States. So that's one of the goals of, um, Black Lives Matter or exploiting Black Lives Matter uh, is to federalize the police. Because even a long time ago, I think right after the Michael Brown case, the Black Caucus sent a letter to President Obama about federalizing the police. Like, that's going to help. Because, of course, well, if the federal government oversees them, then everything will be great. I don't see how that is going to do anything (laughs) but give them less oversight because it's on a federal level and give more control to the federal government 
where they're going to have a massive army of police forces. So it's like getting around having an, an occupying army. It's a way of getting around it because the military is not supposed to be active within the country. Right. So that's their way around it. Just like they got away, it got around federalizing um, school standards by blackmailing the states into approving them. So this is how they pulled this bullshit. So the, the other stuff they're doing is I don't, I can't speak to a lot of places, although I've heard this happening in other places, but there's helicopters patrolling uh, all over Las Vegas or over residential neighborhoods. I see them all the time. I think I actually hear one right now. Um, so we're being watched a lot closer or a lot closely than in the past. The police presence is up in general and it's in a way of course where you know people might not know that it's a police helicopter or it could be you know for all I know a federal helicopter but I'm pretty sure it's a police helicopter whether it's police or the federal government it's there to watch people essentially it's there to um, patrol it's just air patrol is what it is. So you, of course, have um, that. Um, Trump had stated, <laughs> of course, and, you know, they would probably be the same thing with Hillary because it's all, you know, they're all controlled anyway, that they want more police because, you know, all these terrorist threats, we need more police. And I still can't believe how all these people that call themselves somewhat libertarian or libertarian leaning or whatever are supporting Trump when everything out of his mouth has been totally anti freedom. At least the majority of stuff out of his mouth. So with uh, that pretty much covers the police aspect um to summarize I mean the police regardless of what they're they're saying they're becoming uh more militarized they want to turn them into an army they're getting a bigger presence and even more uh, things like helicopters and drones as well. Um, they also were illegally uh, setting up these cell phone, fake cell phone towers to spy on cell phone calls that they weren't supposed to be doing. I forget the exact name of it. Um, they were doing that as well. But it, to summarize, it's it's a it's an it's an army, an occupying army within the U.S. that's ready and preparing for war is what it, exactly what it is. It's preparing for civil unrest. It's preparing for civil, diso not civil disobedience, but noncompliance. It's preparing for people not obeying the government. I mean, it's pretty obvious, you know, and you put that together with even what I've gone through so far regarding, you know, the databases and that's, you know, where things are going. And it's definitely not in the direction of freedom. Plus, you have all of these ridiculous laws that they're able to arrest people for and them doing things like, uh, you know, taking people's DNA and, you know, um, 
putting it in a database and more of that. And um, I don't know if arrests has gone up, but uh, I would think that they probably has. Now, maybe recently it might have gone down because I know in certain places it went down because supposedly the police were scared or whatever. There's a war on police, even though if you look at the number of the amount of police that will end up being killed this year, it will still probably be like under 60 or around that or whatever for the whole country. I mean, it's not... If you take the whole number of police that are killed, it's it's higher. But that has nothing to do with, you know, a lot of cops are killed in car accidents or suicides or things like that. So, um, but if you take those out and just count actual police that are killed by other people, it's really low. It's not even in the top 15 most dangerous uh, jobs or rated in the top 15 or if it is, it's like right at 15 and it depends on the one that you look at. So, so that's all the time we have for tonight. We'll be back tomorrow to continue this conversation and go through the other aspects, uh, technology, more about, uh, the injustice system with judges and prisons and, uh, the Supreme court, also, uh, tax, taxes, laws, um, the medical industry, and we'll talk a little about the UN as well, and then kind of bring it all together. So definitely tune in for part two uh, tomorrow. And I appreciate everybody tuning in tonight. Make sure to check us out at nonpartisanlibertyforall.com. And again, remember that we're 24-7, so when we're not live, we're currently playing old shows, so there's a lot of good information in those shows, as we're the type of show that we've done a lot of, I would say, philosophical uh, type shows that still you can listen to today, that it's not based on, you know, the news for the day or whatever so that you can still listen to those shows and get a lot out of them. So, so thanks again, everybody uh, for tuning in and have a good night and hopefully I'll see you tomorrow or you'll hear me tomorrow. Take care. If you're white, then the courts will figure it out. We don't get to take it away. We force it. But at the end of the day,